Hey, welcome Grace Point. Pastor Brad with you. Anybody else that's watching, welcome in. We're going through the book of Matthew. Man, we had a good time last week talking about the Jews and the Gentiles, how the promises were confirmed to the Jewish nation, but the Gentiles were included. And this woman here kind of is before her time. You know, she's receiving promises because her faith is pulling in the promises made to her uh, in, in the new covenant beforehand because Jesus is the covenant, okay? He's the fulfiller <clears throat> of all the promises, and He's able to give her her miracle. It's awesome. All the promises in Christ are yes and amen. We're going to move on now. And so in uh, Matthew 15, 29... Lord, bless our hearing tonight in Jesus' name. It says, Jesus departed from there, skirted the Sea of Galilee, went up on a mountain and sat. Then great multitudes came to him, having with them the lame and the blind and the mute and the maimed and many others. And they laid them down at Jesus' feet and he healed them. You got to believe these were all Jewish people. That's who Jesus went, went to, and he healed them. So the multitudes marveled when they saw the mute speaking, the maimed were whole, the lame were walking, and the blind were seeing, and they glorified the God of Israel. We see this over and over again in Jesus' ministry. What was he doing? Was healing, was he just trying to prove he was God? And I know in a manner of speaking, of course, you know, I know I might have misspoke a little bit before because in a manner of speaking, of course, the healing miracles were signs and wonders that were demonstrating who he was, but it, not, it did not exclusively prove he was the son of God. It was his resurrection from the dead that put the stamp on it because even his apostles were doing miracles and they weren't the son of God. They were doing them through faith in Christ, right? But in a manner of speaking, I mean, they were confirming the word and showing that uh, he was from God. But it was his resurrection that confirmed that he was the son of God. But why, why was he healing? Is this something unusual with God, something new and something different in the house of Israel? I'm going to tell you no, because in Matthew, it said he came to fulfill the law and the prophets. And if he's healing constantly, he's obviously fulfilling the, law, the, fulfilling the law and the prophets. Last week we read out of Exodus 15, 26, where God revealed himself. He said, I am the Lord that healeth you. He had revealed himself as a healer. And in, in, you know, I, I've been through all this before, but Psalms 103, he says, he heals all your diseases forgives all your iniquities. This was something that was baked into the covenant. This was something that was promised. And Jesus was confirming the promises made to the fathers. And one of these promises was for healing. Thus, we go back to Romans 8, or 15, rather 15, 8. Jesus confirmed the promises made to the fathers. He healed all the time. He's obviously confirming the promises. All of Israel was coming out, and any Jewish person that came to Jesus automatically received healing. But I'm going to tell you something. They didn't only receive healing, they received the forgiveness of sins. I imagine in a big crowd like that, you had a lot of sinners, right? I imagine. Not everybody there was obeying the law. They had multitudes of them. Okay, they were under a curse. They were breaking the law. They were under a curse. They were sick. They were, and, and Jesus forgave their sins, and he healed their diseases. And I know, to me, obviously, the forgiveness of sins is the greater thing. But he was just confirming his word that he had promised to them. And there's countless other places in the Old Testament. So I don't want you to separate that out. And I don't want to go back through it all because I've taught on it. I don't want to separate that. And now... The Gentiles, that's you and me, we've been included in these promises. And if we come to God, to the throne room of grace, we can obtain the mercy of divine healing the same way they did. 
Come unto Jesus, all you that labor and are heavy laden. Those promises are for us. All the promises are yes and amen in Christ. That's what the Bible says. And to me, it's really clear. So uh, I just want to be humble about it. It's a mercy. You don't earn it. Anybody that ever approached the Lord for any blessing, you don't earn it. You don't deserve it. That There's nothing you can do that qualifies you for it except that God is giving it to you based on mercy. He doesn't even owe it to you. Out of His goodness and mercy, He's provided it for you. So it's simply a matter of humbly receiving what He has provided. Just like the forgiveness of sins. Nobody in this room or listening to me deserves God's blessing, God's healing, or even the forgiveness of your sins. You don't deserve it. You get it out of the pure mercy of God. And so that's how he was healing. It was just the pure mercy of God, the same way the Canaanite woman got it. Now, Jesus called his disciples to himself and said, I have compassion on the multitude. They've continued with me now uh, three days and have nothing to eat. And I do not want them to send them away hungry and to faint. And his disciples said, where are we going to get enough bread in the wilderness to feed such a multitude? He said, how many loaves do you have? And they said, seven and a few fish. So he commanded the multitudes to sit down on the ground. He took the seven loaves and the fish. He gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to them, his disciples. And the disciples gave to the multitude, and they all ate and were filled. And they collected up to seven large baskets full of fragments that were left. Now those who ate were 4,000 men besides women and children, and he sent them away and got into a boat and came to the region of Magdala. Okay, and Jesus is just amazing. So Jesus is out confirming the promises made to the fathers. He's multiplying the bread and the fish. Do you know that happened in the Old Testament too? You know, almost, I, I'm trying to think, almost any miracle that you see in the Gospels was already done in the Old Testament. In the book of 2 Kings, I don't have it right in front of me. You can look it up. I think it was Elisha, the prophet. But there had already been the multiplication of loaves and loaves, bread, in the Old Testament. Almost every miracle Jesus did, do you know that there was the raising of the dead? in the Old Testament? Yeah. Elisha, Elijah raised the dead. The, uh, the widow was at the widow from Zarephath's son died and she, her son was raised from the dead. There was the healing of diseases, Naaman the Syrian. Uh, when the people sinned and they got bit by those snakes and, and uh, they, uh, Moses put a, a snake on a pole and lifted it up. Anybody that looks at that snake is going to be healed of their snake bites. They all looked at that pole, and anybody that looked at that pole was healed. Jesus said, if I'm lifted up, I'll draw all men to me, just like Moses' snake on a pole. I'm going to become the curse for you. Every promise, everything that happened in the Old Testament was pointing to Jesus, and Jesus is fulfilling the law and the prophets, multiplying bread, just like the Old Testament. Healing diseases, just like the Old Testament. And you could go on and on to the things that Jesus did, just like the Old Testament, all the miracles. Because he was the fulfillment of them. That's just amazing. And he's going to continue his ministry and continue, we're going to see, in the miracles. But now, as Jesus is approaching Jerusalem... He is going to get more and more friction from the religious leaders. They're going to fight against him. They're, they're afraid that he's going to come and take their position of power and authority, come and take their place, and they're going to oppose him. They're going to recognize that he really does have power, and he is the Son of God, and he's going to take away their position with the, Jew, with the uh, Romans, and they're going to be fighting him. More and more you're going to see this until it culminates in Jesus being crucified on the cross where he fulfills all the great promises of God. 
On that cross, Paul said in 2 Corinthians, I believe it's, it's chapter 8 or 9, that he became poverty. 2 Corinthians 5.21 says he became sin. 1 Peter says that in 1 Peter 2.24 says that he bore our sins on his body on the tree. And by his stripes you were healed. All those things, all the promises are going to be realized. And the Jewish leaders don't even know it. And as Jesus is going to the cross, and now he's setting his face to go to Jerusalem to fulfill the ultimate obedience and ultimate promise to die for the sins of the people and to raise from the dead and to initiate a new covenant. So as we move further and further into Matthew, you're going to see Jesus talking about this. You're going to see this hostility in Matthew 23, the, the, going to really hit it with the uh, scribes and Pharisees as he is concluding his ministry. And we'll pick up there next week in uh, chapter 16, we'll just, where Jesus is marching on in his mission.